How's my time? 40 seconds. Okay. You're going to engage the 170 again with two shots. Okay. Then you're going to engage the 127 with two shots. So 12 round count. 12 round count. Please try not to shoot the tents. We put them up there to cover the targets for you to give you a better chance of hopefully having a great time. I'm shooting an H&N slug, 218, 34 grain, and I'm shooting about 1050 to 1060 feet per second. Hit. Ready. Nice shoot. 160 foot pound limit. Oh, foot pounds. Oh, foot pounds. oh. oh no, not, not hey, weight I thought you were picking on fat guys. Way more than that. <laughs> Impact. Impact. So that's on the training side. Okay. And now you see this museum that we're in. Yeah, there's a museum, uh, there's a store, there's a range indoor, outdoors, place is incredible. Yeah, so it's amazing. So now it's the Six Hour Academy and Experience Center. Impact. Like I'll go, Gibson. I'll go 50 to 100 bar 50 difference. difference. Yeah, Damn. yeah, because really all that first reg is doing is taking pressure off of the rear reg. At this time, shooters on the line, you'll have 30 minutes, three zero minutes to bleed this course of fire. Double tap. Your shooter information is here in the back of the packet. You can scan the QR code for your shooter information packet. Let me show you where to park, okay? This was a 300 bar. The yes. one that comes on there, is it a 250 bar? The one that comes on is 250. Um, if I fall to 250, I get 12 shots until, until I, I hit 160 on the rig, which is where I've set my rig. Okay. And that's enough to get through a stage. Get back. I just get my dope card ready kind of game plan and have just a set of where I'm going to start as far as my holdover. Like I said on the first one, I just held straight up and then I kind of go from there. So I'll make corrections if necessary. <laughs> To move on to the next target, you have to hit the first one, to the next one, to the next one, eight shots total, right? I am shooting the Zans, the Ventress 56 green Zans, at 865. First reg's at 150, second reg's at about 125. I'm guessing about 231, maybe. Where's Nicole? She's supposed to give you a ticket. Is that one legend? Oh, there's two legends in the same up, car! Dude? Oh my god, you're good. Good morning. What's up, Ernest? It's good to see you. So welcome to Sig. Thank you. It's a beautiful be property, here. man. Like so my wife's at Disneyland right now and it worked out pretty good because I called her and said, babe, I'm at Disneyland too. So I'm shooting the JSP knockouts 217, the 2539. So that's why I've been shooting ever since I got this gun. I love them. I'm shooting them at about 970 right now. The more lines you got, right yeah. the more it spins. Yeah, I see. So, look at from here to there, it won't make a complete twist unless it's 77 inches long. So this is good for the wind. Yeah. Welcome to NAC. <laughs> it YAC is made possible by Air Venturi, Hawksport Optics, Diana Air Guns, FX Air Guns, Pro Air Federation, Air Arms, Sports Match Rings UK. H&N Sport Pellets, Air Marksman Air Gun Accessories, and JSB Predator Pellets. And you guys know the best way to thank them. Alright, stop right there, stop right there, so we don't twist it again. I got it, I got it, I got it. I'm just doing this because he's not here, but are they not in here? You gotta be I shit. think they're in my cart. That's not cool. And then after we do that, that, that last one that's over there, we're gonna have to take on the back of that pop, the pop up, the big one. Yeah. 
Pro class? Yes. Are you doing bench rest? Yes. What about PRS? Yes. All right. Are you a pro am? Yes. That's my son Max over here. Every time I go hang out with you guys, I go home. That's it. That's why I didn't chew my room. Green. Last bench. Once the registration begins, this gate will be closed. We'll have caution tape. Nobody will be allowed through here because that will be the live fire for Squatch Bomb. Here we will uh, damage some pellets. Max, we see one of those. I was gonna give you. Uh, you got one. Uh, no. So one, that one in the middle. Hey, this is three here. Yep. Yep. The same thing with the checks. I almost had the price. Right. Yes. That's it. All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you. So much. Thank you. Oh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Steve! Yo! Not you, Steve. Other Steve! There's more than one? What's the weight on this bad boy? 30 pounds. What caliber? 30 cal. Wait a minute. 30 pounds? 30 caliber? 30, 30, 30. 30, 30. The world's first 30, 30 air gun, folks. Squatch Bomb's gonna be 300 plus yards on a Firebird. Nice. Yeah, so is that man. the big bore? Yeah, More dude. Or less, that, the Squatch Bomb? Yep, that's gonna be the super long range part. You guys will have access to the to the firing line to do your job. Um, they're just gonna ask you, obviously, not to abuse it, but you can do your jobs. Awesome. You know, don't don't go past the benches, that type of stuff. And uh, the SIG guys are super cool. Here's your swag bags and your t-shirt. Thank you. Let me show you where to park. We are right here. You're gonna drive this way and park here or here. This road is blocked off. You can take a golf cart, a shuttle, or you can walk this path and you will arrive at bench rest. How'd you like that? I think that was How many registered shooters, Kev, do you know? Uh, right at 100, but there are still people registering right now. So it's one of those things we expect it to really kind of blow up. Guys, this is Steve Gilchrist. Steve is the director of training for Sig Sauer Academy. And Steve, if I may, I have four questions for you, sir. Okay. Uh, a little bit about yourself. Sure. Um, what is the Sig Sauer Academy? Maybe a little bit of history on it. Okay. And what makes it so special in your industry? You, yeah, you bet. And first of all, thank you for being here. So, Welcome. yeah, so a little bit about myself. Uh, born and raised here in New Hampshire. Uh, served in the military, uh, active duty army. Thank you for your service. Uh, yeah, I appreciate it. I'm, Proud to have served my country. Uh, once I got out of the military, I served my community as a police officer. And during my time as a police officer, uh, I learned about Six Hour. And I came and became an armorer and began taking training. Uh, and then now I've been here at Six Hour uh, for now over 10 years, uh, starting as an instructor. Uh, I was in product management for a short period of time. Cool. And now I'm the director of training here at the academy. So again, I was able to take my love and passion of serving my country and my community, and then I bring that here to a company that supports law enforcement, military, and civilians with a product. And uh, you know, it's a great, uh, great experience for myself. Incredible accomplishment. Yeah. If I may, what is the Sig Sauer Academy? Yeah, the Sig Sauer Academy has changed over the years, and it's just an amazing story. If you look at Sig Sauer over, the, especially the last ten years, for example, it went from a pistol company to everything that you see nowadays, mm -hmm. right? The Sig Academy has been here for about twenty years. And in that time, it expanded just as the company did. But we've always been here as far as, and most people don't know about it, but the SIG Academy's been here in support of the manufacturing company through armor's classes and teaching people how to shoot. Um, but as the company expanded, so the Six Hour Academy expand. And so again, we have classes for every walks of life uh, or discipline that you're looking for. Whether you've never shot a handgun or a rifle or a shotgun in your life, 
We have classes for you to the highest level military folks that are out there or law enforcement. Okay. So that's on the training side. Okay. And now you see this museum that we're in. Yeah, there's a museum, uh, there's a store, there's a range indoor, outdoors, place is incredible. Yeah, so it's amazing. So now it's the Six Hour Academy and Experience Center. So now you can come here. We have a flagship store that obviously displays Six Hour product. We have a museum to see the history of SIG. And then we also have now for the first time an indoor range where the SIG Academy is open to the public, whereas before you had to be part of a class or register for a class. So we just continue to expand and provide training and an experience uh, to folks here in New Hampshire or anyone that comes here. It is an experience indeed. It's interesting when you walk around the facility, you know, there's SWAT teams outside, yes. you know, clearing like Greyhound buses and then Right behind us here, there's civilians, you know, yeah. taking classes on how to uh, how to shoot a, a sidearm. It's, yeah. it's incredible. So it's, it's an amazing uh, place, and we do a lot. Uh, you know, because we have the big name of Six Hours, sometimes people don't realize that the Sig Academy exists. But we are here. We have over a thousand classes a year, thousands of students per year, and we continue to expand and we continue to evolve. And uh, obviously, as the product line evolves, we have to evolve with it. And so it's a, just a great opportunity. Uh, for staff to be here and the experience that we have but again we get to reach and have contact with so many people across the country and across the world where SIG is sold so it allows us to just have a great experience not only as an employee but also to anyone that's coming here. That's amazing you know as long as I have you in front of them yes. and, and speaking of expanding and growing let me please thank you for allowing us to hold the Northeast Air Gun Classic here at your amazing facility and, uh, and the way you guys have been treating us is world class. So It is exciting to have you here, and it's a pleasure, and we're looking forward to the future. Thank you very much. Appreciate your Absolutely. time, and have a great rest of your Thank day. Thank you. Do want to remind everyone, tomorrow during the competition, you will be required to wear eye protection. That is the SIG policy. Please make sure you have some support of eye protection. You might want to start wearing it now. It, it's going like this. I want it tighter. <laughs> if it's not, it's like, whoa! Can I break out my other backup gun? This was broke, man. It just ain't acting right. always come back on the line I just need to make sure that we keep doing 15 minutes to make sure we get more people on the line if you have less than one minute remaining please keep your muscles pointed down rain if you're all set this time you can always do a bird shot <laughs> Guys, this is Justin Welch. He's one of the winningest shooters that I know of, and I've asked him today to take us through his FX Impact M3. He just came off the 100 yard. Yeah. Uh, it's our first day out here at NAC. Justin, the floor is yours. Can you just kind of teach him your rig? Teach him my rig. Okay, so what we have here is a fully customized FX Impact M3 and 30 cal. Um, it's got the air marksman backbone long up on top. It's got that extra 30. MOANs built into it, which is nice. I also have the Eagle Vision um, cant mounts, so that way we can put as much MOA as I need if I really want to stretch the distance. Um, we have the Air Marksman anvil on the bottom here, and that keeps the gun nice and steady. It's real heavy. I don't have any weights added to it at the moment, so we will eventually. Okay. But um, to you know, kind of keep things nice and sturdy. Can I ask you a question about yes, the, about the backbone? Yeah. What what does this do for you on the gun as a shooter? Like, what are the benefits to these guys? Okay, so what's cool? The feature I love about the backbone is the anti double feed. So it has a ball detent here in the back that catches your actual probe mechanism. So you know, once you cock your gun, it's that hand that you know that handle's pretty loose. It can do whatever you want. So if you accidentally tap it, it can close, especially with the new heavier handles. So with that detent in the back, it keeps your gun open and you don't accidentally double feed in them because once you double feed, you basically have to ditch that shot. Oh, or, sure. You know, and in the precision world, like a shot is a shot. So no matter you double feed or not, that counts, you know, so. It's important not to. Exactly, you don't want that to happen. Um, the other key feature is that 30 MOA. That 30 MOA helps out a lot, you know. The original guns have 20 MOA, but sometimes you just need a little more if you're doing that precision shooting and you really like to dial. A little more lollipop. Yep. Can I ask you, um, you know, 
tuned, like you mentioned it's a 30 caliber. Can you speak to them a little bit about uh, the round you're shooting, the speed, maybe how you set the gun up in terms of regs and philosophy with regs and hammer spring and how it all balances out, maybe even touch on the VA a little bit? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I knew that we were gonna be away from my normal stopping grounds, so I tuned the gun down real low, low reg pressure, so that way I could get a lot more shots per fill. I'm normally the high reg pressure guy because I don't like turbulent air, but since we're so far from home and I know I was gonna be borrowing tanks, I tuned it way down with the same velocities with the lower reg pressure, so that way I could get a, you know, more of a shot count. And with that Air Marksman 700 bottle on there, that really helped out with that as well. Um, I'm doing 30 cal, 40, 44 grain um, JSBs, and I'm pushing them right at 880 to 900 okay. in that range. Um, I normally change on the bench during the conditions. I'll go two or three clicks on my hammer wheel if I see any inconsistencies and find that you know that ticket spot a little sweet spot to find that sweet spot to get the that accuracy for those cards can i ask a regulator question yeah on a 30 cal for a guy like you you mentioned um low reg pressure you mentioned high reg pressure yeah what would that and that look like okay so right now i'm running at 110 on the reg pressure 110 bar i normally run it closer to 140 to 150 which shuts your valve a lot faster. And so why is that important? To you? So why is that important to me? Because a pellet has this big skirt on the back. Well, if you get a short burst of air after the pellet has left the barrel, kind of you know just it gives it that little wobble yeah. and, and that you don't want. So okay, you know, and without air stripper in there, without an air stripper, you know, you you will get that, and that's why I like with the higher reg pressures, you close that valve before the pellet leaves the barrel, and you don't get a you don't take a chance of it having a burp after the. The projectile leaves the barrel. So you're doing most of your trimming before you even get to the VA, it sounds like. Pretty much. Okay, and do you use the VA when you're out um, there shooting? Some, sometimes. I really don't like, I'll, I'll find a sweet spot with that and just leave it alone most of the time, but it just depends. If, if I change those clicks and it's not working, I will start to turn that valve and close that dwell time of that valve as well, too. Oh, okay, try to pinch it a little bit, a yep. little bit there, too. What about... Um, uh, the, the first regulator. You were, you were talking about Reg 2. Yes. There's another regulator up here. What do you set? Go ahead. So, what do you set I, that I delete that. You just open it up. Like, so take I, it out? So, or so yeah, it it's it's got a Crawford and Lip Reg Delete in it right now. Okay. Um, I use this gun mainly for precision other than bench rest, so I'm kind of multitasking with it. Mm -hmm. um, so, with that Reg Delete, I'm able to shoot a lot faster for precision and stuff like that so I don't have to worry about the refresh rates and stuff like that. That but, makes a lot of sense. And then if I get on a good win streak and I want to you know, haul butt of that card, I can do that now because that I don't have that first reg in between those two chambers slowing me down. So by opening it up, you're, 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 making, you're making for a much bigger breadth of that plenum in between, a quicker breath of that plenum in, yeah. in between shots. I'll, I'll sacrifice a little bit of e, you know, ES ESs and, SD and, and SDs. SDs for being able to follow up a lot quicker on my shots. Okay, if you were if you were running this rag, yep. and that ES and SD was really important to you, like let's say you're just a just a long distance guy, just a hundred yard guy, whatever. Yep. How how much how much difference do you like to see between those? Rags? I like to see 60 bar and above. Okay, that's 60 bar and above. And whenever you have that front rake, if you're too close, what you're doing is is you're filling from a little bitty chamber that goes to the gun into your power plenum. So if your reg is too close, it's sitting there pulsing back and forth because that center chamber is filling before as the the rear the rear reg is dragging the air through. The first one's filling up because it's such a smaller chamber. So if you have them set real close, you will get actually worse inconsistencies with. So it gives you like a cleaner, more more reliable reset. Yes, as far as you, where that you that first one you want that nice initial rush to push into the rear reg, mm -hmm. and it shh, and it closes. That's what you want. Ah, very interesting. God, this has been amazing, Justin. Thank you for uh, all them learning nuggets. Yeah, love it, man. And um, I love you, and I wish you well out here. Thank you. <laughs> Good luck. I Pro must be worn on this range. I will give you one alibi. I'll let you know that you need to have it on after that.
you will no longer be on this range. Myself or my contrary will come down and give you some air. If there are any issues, please raise your hand. Myself or my cadre will come down and we will take care of that as well. I like the monkey, it's like coming here. It's, it's, That's all I kind of like, yeah, it's, it's, you can tell it's very old. Yeah. And I like lobster rolls. So. One 10 footer staged over here for Steve tomorrow. Okay. Uh, he's going to do some interviews with shooters. A 10 foot table over there? Over there, yeah. Is he one in the shade? Or? Um, I don't know for lighting purposes. Okay. I'll put it uh, over try there. Try to look like we know what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Point over there and you go. And okay. You know, you're being memorialized now. <laughs> he's, he's making, he's making me make talk. On video. He's making me do this. Oh, man. This would not have happened without this man right here. <laughs> we just call that the side. You can walk down. There's a string on the ground. Do not go past that string. Shooters on relay one. North. Yes, uh, the clearance, when you tension, it has to be a perfect, you know, tension to it. The yeah, distance. We, was, we kept shooting, we couldn't figure out why we were shooting always to the left. We were shooting to the left, then it would throw one perfect, then we yeah. shoot left to the left, and we're like, all right, let's think. We just took the whole outer shroud off, yeah. put, put everything back together. Five shots, he was hitting exactly where he was aiming. Only five? I would have shot a whole couple of No, he shot, we didn't, but five shots, it was right where he wanted it, so he kept shooting. So he cleaned all that shit off? Mm hmm. Of yeah. course, I couldn't find out happens to want to jam them. I was concerned about it. It has to, it has to be a certain specific distance when you torque it. Folks, this is Matt Dubber of YouTube channel Air Arms Hunting South Africa, all the way from South Africa, also of Element Optics uh, yep. and Javelin Slugs. Matt just came off his first 100-yard relay, and I've asked yeah. him to take you through his M3. Cool. So this is a, a – my philosophy today was like, go for this whole competition for, for my bench gun, is like, keep it as simple as possible, because when I come out here to the States, I don't bring my own stuff with me. So like I'll get sent a gun or I'll get to borrow a gun and then I've got to set it up like within a day. Right. And not not stressful. No, well the, the and the Pantera takes a lot of time to set up because it's you know finding you know the right slug and the right, the right weight and getting your settings right and putting all the weights on and getting it balanced, all that stuff. Which doesn't leave much time for the bench, but that's okay because um, over the years I've learned that the, the factory 30 cal impact with 44 grain JSBs just shoots like it just shoots out the box so as far as settings go i i legit don't even know what velocity i'm shooting <laughs> i took it out the box i started shooting pellets i zeroed it at like 20 yards at, at, at utah air guns and then when i was degassing it i turned the rig and i didn't and i forgot what my original rig setting was so my rig is not even what it was when i checked the velocity last <laughs> well, then, so well then. I, I have no idea so i was like a bit nervous going into today but it shot really well and then aside from that i've got a bag right at the back um, just so that I can, you know, get more control over the, how I, you know, move my bag at, at, at the rear. Um, you don't see it here, but I've got a, one of the wide AccuTac bipods in the front. It's just super steady, and it's kind of what I'm used to for bench. And then I brought my own grip. Perfect. And that's about it. <laughs> uh, Donny FL in the front, uh, and then the the beast on top, the Element Theos 6236. More developed for sort of precision rifle shooting, but man, the 36 times uh, when you're shooting bench really helps just to see your pellet holes and, and watch your pellet in flight. Um, it's very cool. So I'm, I'm very happy with the setup. Let me ask you this. I don't think it's a secret that you're a big part of FX Air Guns' research and development, have been yep. over the years. So a 30 cal impact M3 yep. in a sniper configuration like this, that's coming to, uh, that comes out of the box at typically what speed and where are the regs usually live in? Uh, so I'm not intimately familiar with 30 cal because we don't get them in South Africa, or we, but I believe that they are set around 880 feet per second, 860 to 880. I think you would probably know better than me. Actually. No, the 22 is the one I've been dissecting yeah. over the last. I, I believe months. it's. A, I know the. I know the best results normally come like 860 to 880. Okay. Um, with 44, 45 grade JSBs. Okay. Um, and the reg I think is around 80 to 100 bar. Okay. On these M3s. Perfect. Can we have a little learning moment with these guys on, on the valve adjustment up in front? That's oh, yeah. a real enigma for a yeah. lot of people. And so what's what's your teaching? With so, so my advice with the valve adjuster is do most of your setup with the hammer spring and the rig. Get that where you want it. 
and then you can start backing off the valve what you don't want is the valve to be open for like for too long um, you want you want the valve return spring to you know once the valve opens you want it to close it again relatively quickly because having the valve closed quickly makes your setup more efficient and you'll actually hear the difference like sometimes if your valve is backed all the way out mm -hmm. and you've set your gun up and you're taking shots it's a bit louder you start screwing your valve adjuster in and you'll actually hear the gun get quieter even though your velocity is staying more or less the same you want your valve to close before the pellet leaves the end of the muzzle. So that that extra air isn't making yeah. it tumble and that, away. Yeah, that turbulence can affect the way the pellet leaves the muzzle. Mm -hmm. And it can just waste air and just create more vibration and all, all that negative stuff. So And the way you find it is to listen for it, if I'm hearing you right, for, for the most part. Yeah, well, or you, you watching can, you can hear it, but what I'm, what I'm doing most of the time is I'm looking at my chronograph mm -hmm. and I'll turn it, turn it, turn it. And I'll probably, I'll, I'll, I'll get to the point where, okay, I'm starting to see my velocity reduce a bit, maybe like 10 feet per second from what it was before, and then, okay, cool, I'll just leave it there. So it's almost like you overtune, you overtune for a little bit higher so that you can kind of pinch on it with that VA. Yes, yeah, exactly. Very interesting. Yeah, yeah I, I like that feature. I mean, um, Pantera doesn't have that. Many other guns don't have that. It, it's something that's that we didn't think about beforehand, but it actually does make a difference. So, and it's basically yeah. just a travel limiter, isn't it? Yeah, it, yeah, it, 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 gives you con it gives you more, I mean, your hammer determines how much your valve opens and how long, but this is just another way of controlling that. It's like a bump stop almost, actually, yeah. inside there. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, and it's very, it's very useful. That, that people, like, there's a lot of talk about harmonic tuning and, like, how your barrel moves and stuff, but actually the most important tuning is, like, getting that the way the valves open and closing right that for me is like that is really important that 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 makes a big difference so you don't get the destabilizing air yeah. it sounds like yeah that makes a huge difference matt thanks for taking us to college man <laughs> sure. i sure. appreciate you as yeah. always that was awesome cool. and um good luck with the rest of your weekend. thank you very much appreciate you cool There's a shooter on deck, which means they're, they're, they're about to come on. That's yeah. the person next. And there's a shooter in the hole, which is after the person on deck, okay? Up on deck. So when you go and talk to them, you're going to give them a quick brief of what the stage is. Okay. Okay. Oh, so shaky, man. <laughs> That's after the 52 yards. If you're squad one, you're going to start at stage one. If you're squad two, you're going to start at stage two. If you're squad three, you're going to start at stage three. And so on down the line. Once you finish your stage as a squad, we're going to be in groups today in our squad. There should be three, uh, four to five people per squad. Once we finish that up, once you finish your stage, you're going to go prep at the next stage. So all you're going to do is chronologically go down. Okay, I need a pen. This is not going to work for me. But they could score your card just for So let's see what this shows. Impact. Is that not an impact? Yep. You're going to move back to the rooftop. You're going to engage the 170 again with two shots. Okay. And you're going to engage the 127 with two shots. Alright. So 12 round count. 12 round count. In fact. Folks, Katie Jacobson, Team Utah Air Guns. I was lucky enough to get the drone on her in this PSC, and it was really cool kind of panning around you, watching you do your thing. Thank you. So I've asked her to uh, take, I've asked her to take you through her rig and setup. Yeah. Katie, the floor is yours. Perfect. So this is my custom Hydra Dipped FX Crown. So this is a 22 caliber with a 600 barrel. I'm running the Element Theos on it which I love so far. I'm also having that Sabre Tactical chassis on it. Lucky enough to get that before it's discontinued. I love it so far. And then we got the Accutac bipod and we have the Send It Leveler. So. Can you talk a little bit, Katie, about what projectile you're shooting and about how fast? Yep, so I'm shooting the JSP Knockouts 217, the 2539. So that's what I've been shooting ever since I got this gun. I love them. I'm shooting them at about 970 right now. So yeah, they're, they're what I've 
stuck with and I love him so. Have you also been shooting this gun in the in the hundred? No, so I've been shooting an impact in the hundred. So this is what I use for precision, for NRL, all that all that kind of stuff. Got it. Well, take me through your experience. It was kind of fun watching you. It looked like quite a struggle out there, trying to maneuver <laughs> around cars and yeah. ramps and all the other obstacles they've got here. Yeah, this was actually a really fun course fire. They had really fun obstacles. It was really great. That car was difficult. It was really unleveled, but it was fun. Um, I had a little hard time. My gun fell off the rack, so we were trying to adjust oh, no. it after that. But. Yeah, it was still super fun. Was, like really great course of fire, lots of different targets, so it was great. And the weather and the wind? The wind was rough. It was changing up pretty quick, but you know, it, it's what it's, it's part of the game. It it's is what makes it fun. Well, so. What about the cold? Like I saw a lot of people oh, really gosh. struggling. Like everyone's digits were kind of freezing and their bodies yeah. weren't working right and everything else. Yeah, I know my hands were freezing, so trying to warm it up the whole time. But yeah, it's pretty cold, especially that wind. The wind is pretty brutal. Um, but yeah, it can definitely mix with like your elevation. But you know, for the most part, it stayed consistent temperature wise. So that was nice. Good deal. And uh, your thoughts on Nick? This is a really fun competition. I'm really impressed by them, especially with this being their first year doing it. I'm incredibly impressed. Like all hand, yeah. And they've been really helpful and really kind and everything. Like, and they have really fun events. They're running it super well. This is a really, really great range. Obviously, this is like world class facility. Totally. So, yeah, they've done a phenomenal job. The so culture far. of kindness here has been. It has been amazing. Yeah, it's. I don't know, like, it's been really laid back, been really friendly. Everyone is just happy to be here. It's been a blast. It really has. Katie, um, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Good luck Got the rest in. of the weekend. You're welcome. Okay, thank and you so uh, much. I'll see you out there. Yeah, see ya. Hit. Hit. Bolt open. Impact. 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 Nicely done. I'm looking for a, a song for your porta potty clip. Try the poopy dupe one. I can't find it. You Google How about search taking care of business. Yeah. I can't imagine people just standing in, in the room. Right. Please be a little bit more patient with the people we got on the line. Some of them are still learning how to do a lot of this. We can help each other. We're all big one family. We're all one big team around here. Get ready. Three, two, one, start. go back and forth I'm fine with that okay starting position is gonna be back here if you hold it using a sandbag sandbag in hand magazine in um, and then the bolt back Time. Perfect. Very welcome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that worked. Hit. Actually, I'm looking at a video now. Nickel, I just put up. And we do have targets overall, but ten. Already. Guys, this is Keith Gibson all the way from upstate New York. You're going to leave me hanging here? No, 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 no. I just didn't see it. I didn't see it. <laughs> Keith is actually a Rocky Mountain Air Gun Challenge champion. And so I thought it would be really cool for you to be able to teach these guys about your rig and your setup and your approach. Yeah, so yeah? This, uh, this gun is the first time I'm running an M3 uh, in competition. I've been using an MK2. Uh, but it's really consistent. I like the speeds it gives me. Um, 
and there's a lot of great accessories out for this now that you know just make it like you, you got to do a change up if you're a guy like me that wants the, the newer stuff that might stiffen up the gun. So if, like, if they're new, what are we looking at here? What kind of gun is this? Yes, yeah, so this is a FX Impact M3 in 30 caliber. I'm shooting 56 grain um, sand pellets um, at 870 feet per second. Might end up lowering that speed a little bit. We'll see. Why? Um, not quite sure that I'm exactly tuned for that weight. Like I might want to go a little slower and let them stabilize a little bit more. You see a little wobble? Sometimes. Um, but I know guys are shooting them at 820, like laser beams. Uh -huh. And I just didn't want to go that low. Uh -huh. uh, but that might be the recipe. Yeah, you know? right. Um, but it's it's shooting very, very well. Um, the whole gun stiffened up with a, a backbone rail that comes all the way to here. And then underlapping that, we have the Air Marksman uh, anvil. Does the Air Marksman make both of these? They do, yeah. And you can. Like, I won't do it because it's my bench gun, but you could, like, stand on the gun and it won't flex. It's wow. Awesome. Okay. You can combine those two things. And that's important to you. Why? Um, because when I put a lot of cheek pressure on, um, like, I chipmunk my cheek, mm -hmm. um, I don't want me being excited and pushing harder one time and less another time to change the way that the gun's behaving. Okay. So by stiffening it up to this point, mm -hmm. there, you know, no matter what, the gun is going to be in you know, the same position with no flex at all. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, a Valdata on top, beautiful, beautiful glass. Expensive but beautiful. Um, Accutac up front, their bench model, it's my favorite thing, it's just super, super stable. And uh, Sabre Tactical Monopod on the back. So like a lot of guys shoot with a bag, um, but for me it's always like, just doesn't feel solid. Mm -hmm. And with this, you know, one little turn and you can change the elevation, so. Can you also change windage? You can. Um, I don't. I just I just move the rifle because I shoot vertically through columns. Okay. So for me, it's kind of like the gun is basically in a vice, and I just have to read the wind as, as we go. Okay. Which I did okay today, but um, push not a, that a little a little bit faster than you wanted. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you know just the the blue circles are really hard to see your impacts. So normally when I shoot, each shot tells me the micro adjustment. So I had a ton of eights and nines. Uh, but I, I never really got the full adjustment to a really bunch of bunch of tens. Yeah, see where you're at. Mark. Yeah, so that's frustrating. Can you speak to? Um, sorry. Can you speak to this um, this giant bottle yeah. here? Yeah. That doesn't so, come with the impact, right? It does not come with the impact. Okay. This is also made by Air Marksman. It takes 300 bar, so you get extra 50 bar. Okay. Plus, it's 700 cc. I was gonna this ask you. 700 cc, and it, it you know is that just for shot count or is there? It's for it's for shot count, um, and like. You know, everybody else in the beginning would run double bottles. Um, so this lets you have one bottle with more than enough air, and it still fits in the case. So, so it's more about that, if I'm reading you, than having the weight? Yeah, no, it's not about weight at all. Hmm. Like, I don't even add weights to the bench gun. It's heavy enough as it is, stable enough as it is. My PRS rifle, that, you know, I add weights so that that has a balance point. But this doesn't need to balance. It's locked here and here. So. Yeah, exactly. And it's a, and there's no uh, no flex in there. No. <laughs> do, do you want to speak a little to um, like your tune and how you set up the gun and the regs and stuff? Yeah. Um, normally it would be a lot lower, but since I'm shooting 56 grain pellets, um, I actually raise the rear reg to 140 bar um, versus like if I'm shooting 44 grain, so I'm down at 100 bar. Okay. Um, and the hammer is about three quarters of the way towards max. The valve is all way out and the second rag is about 20 feet per second or i'm sorry 20 bar over the rear rag. 20 bar difference in between yeah is that normally where you like to like to be it depends um if i'm shooting for bench yes uh if i'm shooting prs where it might be super fast or something like that i like to put a little more space in between them so it refills really fast what's a little more space for like i'll go Gibson? i'll go 50 to 100 bar 50 difference. difference yeah Damn. yeah because really all that first rag is doing is taking pressure off of the rear rig. So it can work better. So it's it can work better, better, last longer, not wear out so fast. So, I mean, it's really, I just think of the, the first rig as a buffer. It just takes some of the weight off. A little bit of a step down. Yeah, that's yeah, really yeah. exactly. And then and then if you, want a, if you want quicker cycling, quicker breathing in between shots. Then I, you, yeah, then you, I give it more space so that, so that this plenum is getting extra air all the time versus having to ask for it from 
that. Right. Gotcha. And did I hear you right saying you leave the valve adjuster alone, just pretty much wide open? On this one, yeah. Um, but usually what I'll do is like I'll go wide open, I'll get to uh, about 20 feet per second faster than I want to shoot, mm -hmm. and then I'll bring the speed down with just the valve, not touching the hammer at all. Okay, so you'll tune it for a higher speed, yeah. and then kind of squeeze on it yeah, with because, the valve adjuster. Because when I do that, I tend to see tighter feet per second spreads than if I just tune right up to it. Right, and yeah, don't right go up any to that higher. balance point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like to just come come back just a little bit. And it doesn't give you any ability to compensate for temperature change either when you kind of right there too, right? Yeah, yep, and, that's absolutely right. Yeah, and that's huge, like out in Utah. And, and what I do, awesome. once I have the valve setting the way I want it, mm -hmm. I just like. This gun is being shot on hammer setting 13, and depending on how cold or hot it is, I might be on 14 or 12, but it's always one of those three. Oh, and like, you would never notice for hunting, but when we're talking about millimeters, yeah. I mean thousands of dollars, mm -hmm. you notice little things like that happening. And yeah. Try and can I can I ask a pro like you? You know, I'm always wondering. These guys are always wondering. How really important is extreme spread and standard deviation to 100 yard repeatable accuracy? Like I know it's important. It's, but Im like, it's important. Like to it, what? Extent? It's the same thing I was saying with the, the you know humming wise. You can have a 30 foot per second spread and not even notice it. Um, but for punching X's, um, I like to get it down under 10. I don't think there's a whole lot of difference between. That's 10 what and I was. Five, that's but, what I was after. But yeah, just get it under 10 and it's just gold. Is there a difference between 10 and 20? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah, I do. You heard it from a pro guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last question. Yeah. Um, Nack, what are your thoughts, bro? Honestly, I don't want to jinx them, but I can't believe how smoothly it's running for it being their first time <laughs> yes, out. doing a good job. Um, so I'm impressed by that. And they're loading. Six hours. Beautiful. Oh. Um, so it's a great place to come. I'm sure next year, like they said, they're going to get a few more benches in, so that'll make you know, it easier to get through the heats. But yeah, I'm impressed. My first big party didn't go as well as this, I can tell you that. So. <laughs> it is, it is smooth. Yeah. Keith, uh, thank you for the learning nuggets. Yeah, man. You are invaluable, sir. Good, Good luck time. this weekend. Appreciate you. Thank you. Are you done? Uh, cricket. Ten. Two. Caliber? Thirty. Ammo? Uh, FX. Draw it up. I think I saw them moving the car. Oh yeah, man. With the back. No, it's it. <laughs> it, this thing's proper, and I think it's 175 to the furthest target. Oh wow. Yeah, I'm telling you, these guys have really gone all out. What you doing, Ernest? I'm tightening down my long barrel with the uh, barrel clamps. <laughs> what is this? I, you're not the first one asking this question. I don't recognize what I'm seeing. It's an old Dreamline classic, man. Yeah, but what? What's S it? What's it wearing? Competition guy. Yeah. SA? Is that the Scandinavian? Yes, stuff? Yeah, you know your stuff. Oh, well, I remember thing. seeing it at Ewa like in 2018 yeah. or something crazy like that. I like remember that. you way back then. Were yeah, there? Yeah, look at that. That is cool. We're changing directions with the wind. We shot 250, and I was like, like quarter mil left yeah. at 250. So. Yeah, but I'm I'm very what I'm very curious about is to see whether my Pantera with the same slugs shoots differently, or like the BC is different here than it is at home. It shouldn't be. It should be exactly the same. The way to win, the way to win, is you have to hit the one at 300 in the shortest amount of shots. So the the lowest amount is three shots essentially. I need to add more weights over here. Are you gonna shoot that today or somebody else? I'm gonna shoot this. Good for you. Yeah. Thank you so much, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I, didn't been, I haven't been there in like a year and a half. I think these are at like 142 right in front of us. Uh huh. And it's 175 to the furthest target behind us. Okay. Ah, okay. So shooting so, from the car. Yeah, that. shooting from the car. You have to shoot across the hood and across or across the deck. So you guys make this rig yourself? Yeah. We, uh, we just built it actually right before the competition. What what uh, horsepower is on this? Uh, I'm not sure on that, on that Alcan. I know they picked it up. 
That's powered. Yeah, these things uh, it fills up real quick too. Fill up this or those? It, it's filling off those. Yeah. I pumped those up a little extra, but it fills these tanks in like 10 seconds. Put it on safe for me. Good job. Perfect. Nice. I promise. Yeah, 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 no. We yeah, we connected really well over the phone last night. It was really good. Awesome. Yes. Yeah. Oh, buddy. There he is. What's up, dude? Oh, what are you? Oh, <laughs> God. My bad. My bad. Like, what was that? Good morning. How are you? I won't kill you with this. <laughs> Listen up, there is a Firebird at 250. That is just for fun. That is just for some booms, okay? We have Firebird's a, a sponsor of this. Uh, Firebird and FX are sponsoring this, this course of fire. So we, we gotta have some booms. Just Oh, oh man, just left side of it and right side of it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 it was an inch, just a little bit. That's you got awesome. it. That's awesome. Good job, buddy. Great shooting, Thane. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <Who's laughs> after? Dude, I shot just left of a Firebird, and then I shot up just after right of it. <laughs> Guys, this is Thane Simmons, owner and inventor of Sabre Tactical, and Thane just came off of the Squatch Bomb course, which is what, 200 yards, 250, and 300 yards, and you were ringing those gongs more than anybody I've heard so far. So I would love to have you take us through your setup and your rig. Okay, awesome. Cool, yeah. let's do it. Yeah, that was, a, that was a fun little shoot. So this is an FX Impact M3. Um, we've got it set up with all the Sabre Tactical goodies, you know, top rail, lower rail, grip, bag rider, cheek rest, butt stock, I mean, everything you can think of. I've got the uh, Element Theos scope, which is phenomenal. I love this scope. Um, then I've got some weights up here, some new Sabre Tactical weights. Um, I'm shooting an H&N slug, 218, 34 grain, and I'm shooting about 1050 to 1060 feet per second. That's amazing. Are you um, are you okay to tell, teach them a little bit about uh, your tune and kind of how you approach that? Yeah. Where you're running your rags and that sort of thing? Yeah, so my reg is about 170. I think, yeah, I think about 160 to 170 on the reg. Um, Tune-wise, I mean, I pretty much have the gun maxed, not, not completely maxed out, but I'm a three and a half. Here on the tensioner and then on the front I'm all the way open on the valve tensioning. Mm -hmm. uh, power wheel and a number eight. What well, was interesting because I heard you mention reg is in singular so did you remove the I did. primary reg or? Yeah so open I, I, I we have a reg delete for the front. Um, it's awesome to have two regs so that so that the second reg doesn't work as hard as the first but I just found that for my particular gun and shooting slugs as high pressures I'm shooting mm -hmm. that first reg um, wasn't wasn't shooting as well with it as it was without it. What kind of winds were you seeing out there? Uh, I wasn't. I held right on the first shot. And at two hundred. At two hundred. Because mm -hmm. it, it I could see wind. Wind was coming right at me, and then halfway down the wind was going left to right, and I missed the target. And so the next shot when I missed, I saw I saw where my splash was, mm -hmm. and so my third shot hit it. Went to two fifty. I just accounted for two fifty is a little bit further than two hundred. I held just a little bit more. It didn't change much at 250, and then at 300, it was actually less, Whoa. less wind. Interesting. Um, because of how it changed down there at the end. So at the 300, after I hit the 250, I went to 300, and I hit just left of the Firebird, because the point of it is, on 300, you have to hit an exploding target, and it's right there in the center of the Sasquatch. And I hit just left of it, and then my next shot, I was like, okay, I got this. <laughs> and my next shot, I shot just right of it. So if I'm hearing you right, that H&N slug really moved very little for you. And we do have wind, I can see it on Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it didn't move very much. I mean, 200 yards, I was I was maybe about half a mil, so 0.5 um, at 200 to the right. And then 250 and 300, it was actually less than that. Wow, that is amazing. So the way the wind's changing is down there, because it's, it's coming head on from up close, mm -hmm. and then it's left to right out there, and then 
I don't know what it's doing at the far end if it's going right to left and countering that. It's so. swirling through these giant pine trees is yeah. what it's doing in all these little rolling hills. So this is uh, my first snack. This is your first snack. Yep. What do you think so far? So cool. Uh, really fun event. Uh, this, this event's really fun too. I mean, for guys to be able to shoot slugs at these distances with pellet guns, is, it's unreal. It is. We're having a great time. Thane, yeah. thank you for the lesson. Yep. And uh, good luck the rest of the weekend. Okay, thanks. Doing you. great things, brother. That was amazing. Shaking them all up good. There's only three of them or so left, so don't worry about it. All right, Keith, here we go. Pick only one. Twelve. Bench number twelve. R one. Just waiting for one last individual here. Keep an eye on the schedule when you're sp where you're supposed to be and when you're supposed to be there. Um, if you're late getting to your flight, you will not be on the plane. You're not going to get to do a, sh uh, a makeup match. If you're not on the line when it's time to go, you're out. Cake, Steve. I was worried about the dust. Really? I got a lot of Oh, Lexi, you're absolutely killing me. <laughs> <laughs> so we just came off of the Squatch Bomb and I was on the dang drone and I heard a big explosion <laughs> and then everyone started cheering and clapping and you rang the 300 yard Firebird? I did. It's like a two inch target. It's a little one. Explosive reactive? Yeah, on my fourth shot, so. We had about, I don't know, two and a half hours worth of shooters running through there. And uh, I'm thinking to myself, I didn't hear a pop, not one, one pop at all. I'm thinking, I made this darn thing too dang hard. <laughs> Finally heard a pop, Mr. Welch, you had 250. They were so. <laughs> so, then this little gal from out of Utah stepped up on the line, who is a Q number, down there, and she ran that sucker straight through, four shots for a big pop. Lexi <laughs> <laughs> and First shot, straight up, impact. Second shot, made a little correction, impact. Third shot, missed to the right, small correction, and then boom, big you explosion. You are amazing. <laughs> if you guys don't know Lexi, this is Lexi Linder, Le Lexi Linder yes. from Utah. <laughs> and you are the women's champion, for, women's champion for 22 NRL, if I'm not mistaken. Was yes. it last year? Yeah, last year, uh, the 2021-22 season, I took the championship title for the match itself and then the season overall as well. And you're so. amazing. So she comes <laughs> out here to NAC. She's got like, you know, serious competition out here and you're one of only two people. The other person I think that hit the Firebird, that was like 200 yards, wasn't it? It was the closer one, yeah. So um, to be in the running to win the top prize, you actually do have to hit the further one. 
so right now I guess it's just me. <laughs> You're incredible. So I am dying to learn about what you're shooting here and you want to just take us through it? Yeah, take it's actually, right? so it's a pretty basic setup. It's the FX Impact. I got it from Utah Air Guns who I'm actually here representing today. And then my scope is a Vortex Viper PST Gen 2. And I run this scope on all of my guns that I compete with. Okay. So yeah, and that's it. What do you what projectile are you shooting and, and what and how fast do you know? So I'm shooting the Xan projectiles uh, 25 cal. I think they're 37 grain. And they're shooting at about 968, I believe. And I'm guessing since we're out here at 200, 250, and 300, you're on the Xan slug. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's been slugs. talking about his pellets. Pellets like crazy. Yeah, I run slugs since I shoot PRS. They just work the best for me. So, yeah. So this 300 yard jazz can be pretty intimidating. Do you want to take us through? Take us through your shoot. Yeah, I was super nervous getting up to the line. Um, I, I really can never shake my jitters, no matter how much I do this, but. I just get my dope card ready kind of game plan and have just a set of where I'm going to start as far as my holdover. Like I said on the first one, I just held straight up and then I kind of go from there. So I'll make corrections if necessary, but the weather's pretty calm today, so there's not much to worry about. So you started at 200 and just worked your way out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so what does it mean? Like if you hit that, that little two inch fireboard at 300, is, is it an automatic win? Or so unless it, so like you have to hit the furthest one to qualify and so as of right now it's just me if anybody else does hit it they either have to do it in three shots because I did it in four or if they do it in four they have to have done it in a faster time than me Amazing. so <laughs> we'll see fingers crossed that would be really cool that would be incredible incredible but, victory for you so yeah. here we are at NAC what do you think Oh my gosh, it's been so much fun. The people here are just honestly incredible. It's such a tight community and it's really neat to be able to see everybody. I you know, met everyone last year at RMAC and this is the first time I've seen most everybody since then. So it's just so much fun. I love it. It is. It's a nice new venue and it, it's running smooth. It is. They're really on top of it. It's been great. So, love that. Well, thank you so much. Um, I'm still really mad at you for doing that while I was up on that bird, but uh, <laughs> I should be mad at you. <laughs> congratulations. Thank goodness Michael went and owner of the organization sure. forum, got the footage. So we'll put oh, it yeah. together and we'll great. show it to him. I'm so stoked. Have a great rest of your weekend. Thank you. Incredible. Thank you so much. Uh, Basenji? That's right. Yeah. Basenji? Basenji, yeah. yeah. Son, what do you think of the event? <laughs> hey, um, it looks like a good event. We had some wind today. It's quite cold. It's not hot like in EBR or something like that. But it's a nice event. It's well organized. Shooters are doing a good job. <laughs> Many of them are shooting our, our stuff. So I'm happy and they're having some good results. And this is what it's important for me. <laughs> who's, this on your, who's this on your right? That's my wife, Katya. Hi Katya. This time she said she would like to go with me. I said, yeah, sure, why not? To see my how my business is. I mean, my job is look, looks like. And how does and how does it look, Katya? <laughs> what do you want to hear from me? <laughs> <laughs> that, it, that it's perfect, and he's doing a great job. Yeah. Oh, you got some? Oh. And I wanted to see the event, to see how it looks like, because I didn't have any expectation. I didn't. Is this your first time in the U.S.? Yes. What do you think? Is it what you thought? It was a bit of a shock. <laughs> a little bit cold. A little bit, maybe a little bit colder than you thought it was over here. Everything is so big. Yeah, it is big.
big cars, big parking spots. Yeah. It's funny when you say that. When I go to Europe, everything seems so, so tiny. Yeah, exactly. Thanks, guys. We have small things, but not everything. That third one. Okay. Little guys with the two there. Yeah. That's like three or four shots. Feels pretty good. I think I. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Put a little sad face on it. Guys, this is Adam Michael from Green Bay, Wisconsin, and I just yanked him off of his second 100-yard relay. Dude, your card looked really good. And the big $5,000 winner with a score of 219 with two X's, Adam Miguel. Yeah! Yeah, it did look very good. So I was hoping that we could have a learning moment and you could teach him about your setup. For sure. And then I'll ask him, you know, how they are asking how things went out here today. All right. That'd be all right? Yeah. Cool. Take us through it, brother. What are we shooting here? So this is a stock FX Impact M3. Uh-huh. Uh, internally wise stock, but outside, you know, just a lot of upgrades outside, mm -hmm. cosmetically. Um, 700 cc bottle air marksman rail air marksman backbone saber tactical back end vortex optics on top razor gen 3 love it mdt grip love that with these i got big mitts some of them grips are so small donnie fl on the end uh accutac bipod i mean it's it's a good rig can i ask you some questions for sure. What what it, what would be the advantage, you know, if we've got somebody new watching and they want to learn how to put a competitive rig together, what what, it, what do you gain by adding some of these aftermarket accessories here, like some of this Air Marksman stuff? You know, what does the Don EFL do for you? Uh, tames down the bark and takes away all that unnecessary air. Um, this rail here adds your weight got so much rigidity with this backbone I mean I push hard sometimes after a good day of shooting my cheekbone actually hurts because I push down on my gun so hard now when you're so when you're shooting it's not a light hold at all for you no no you're rocking it the hand hold my grip is light but my cheek push is hard how about the yeah. shoulder how what are you doing in the shoulder? Uh, medium I would say light hand medium shoulder heavy cheek yeah you're, so you're just trying to ground that gun yeah, a little bit yeah huh interesting and um, you want to talk to us a little bit about your scope and the importance of it? Uh, optics is really key to a, uh, I mean, a competitive bench press gun. You want to be able to see that target, these targets out there. If you get in the paint and you're shooting, especially a 22, it, it hides itself very well in the paint. And then you're wondering, did I shoot that target? Did I not shoot that target? And if you double tap. Gonna That's bad. huge. Yeah. So this is a 22 cal. No, this is actually a 30. Okay. It, <laughs> You're punching I, big holes. Yeah. You can usually see it pretty good with a 30 because you have to hit it perfectly to uh, not be able to see it in the paint. But 
Adam, did you set the rig up? Did you set the gun up yourself? I did. Can, I did. Um, can you talk a little bit to what projectile you're shooting? How fast? A little bit about your. Tell us a little bit about your tune. So I am shooting the Zans, the Ventress 56 grain Zans, at 865. First rigs at 150. Second rigs at about 125. 120, 125. Pretty close. Okay. Yeah, and uh, it, it just loves them out of that that speed. Still working on it a little bit because those Zans are fairly new, but mm -hmm. I mean, this is a Zan pellet you're referencing. Yes. The new Zan pellets. Yeah, the Zan pellets. Yeah, and uh, she'll be dialed in for our Mac coming up. But um, so we'll see you in June or yes. July. I forget June. what it's in June. June, this year. yeah. Middle yeah, yeah. of June. Well, do you want to take us through your shoot a little bit? Uh, yesterday, um, in uh, Relay 3, I shot a 204. Solid. Yeah, I didn't think so, but the wind we had was horrible. It turns out it was pretty solid. Finished second yesterday. Nice. And then today, I did very well. I think one of the better cards of the day for sure. Above above uh, 215, you think? Yeah, 215, 216 probably right there. So I think, I, nice. I think I'm think i gonna be in the finals tomorrow. They combine your score to see where you're at to see if you made the finals, guys. Yeah. Right. Other than that. Well, we're, we're, we're here at Armac. Or excuse me, we're here at NAC. <laughs> yeah. Pardon my French. Uh, it's our first year out here. What do you think? Um, I'll tell you what, it's not Utah wind, but it swirls about three different ways in 100 yards, and it's tough. Yeah. And what's, your, what's been your favorite part of the event so far? Um, the Squatch Bomb was fun. PRS, I still have to shoot yet, but I mean, this facility too is outstanding. Yeah, it's a great tournament. I'll definitely be here next year again. Any advice for any new shooters or people thinking about coming out to compete? If you're thinking about it, do it. Four years ago, I was just thinking about doing it and I finally did it and I'm hooked. I go to everyone if I can now. It's awesome. Everyone out here is very friendly yeah. and very helpful and wants to see you succeed, even your competitive shooters. So it's, it's that kind of environment. For sure. For sure. Adam, thank you, buddy. Thank you. Good luck this weekend. Yep, God, your hands are it. colder than mine and I'm from Florida. <laughs> you should be ashamed of yourself, Green Bay man. <laughs> and first place. Big fat $5,000 check going to Mr. Justin Wells. <laughs> I recognize that Allegro. That's the Spa Mobile. Yep, look at that. SPW right on the golf cart. Let's go see if anyone's home. One, two. Oh, yeah, it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. Oh, there is a spa lurking. What's going on? Is there is there is there an air gun shooting around here? Got the secret weapon out. You have any dogs that are gonna sick no me? Dogs. No, no dogs. dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this get up. Oh yeah. Double load. Ernest. You're gonna take one shot on the left bird at 62 yards, one shot on the right bird at 63 yards. From that same shooting position, you're gonna engage the 100 yard bird out there, same size bird, with two shots. 
You look so healthy, I hardly recognize Thanks, you. Thanks, man. I feel you? great. You look like a man that's omitted sugar from yeah. their diet completely. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Amazing. I drink my calories. <laughs> look at this Not thing. to worry. I, I eat what? his calories for him. <laughs> God's green earth. This is my 30 pound 30. That's a 30-30. It's a 30-30. It's a 30-30. The world's first 30-30 air rifle, yeah. baby. 30-30, dirty-30. You're seeing it here in the Tiffin Allegro. Time? Ready? Yeah. 45 seconds. Folks, this is Ryan Jacobson, Team Utah Air Guns, and we just came out off of, I can't even say it fast, Precision Shooter Competition? There it is. PSC? There it Precision is. Precision Shooter Competition. Precision Shooter Competition. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly. Fr it's freezing, it's windy. I honestly don't know much about the Pantera, but if you want to take the I'll floor take and just teach it. us about your yeah, setup, I'd love to awesome. take you through it. So, all right, so um, let's start with uh, basics. I got a 22 cal. Uh, I'm going to shoot the 30 and a half grain Zans. Um, I've tuned that up to, I had it at a thousand feet per second at home in Utah, but now coming here to New Hampshire, I lost about 30. So I got it back up to 985 to keep it happy. I didn't want to push it too hard. Um, I've actually been debating between the 34 grain javelins mm -hmm. and the 30 and a half. So they're both shooting really good. Uh, that's kind of what I've been recommending for these. Um, it was just a matter of keeping the gun itself happy, not maxing out anything. I don't want to take any risks shooting a competition like this. Like, I do not want to miss out on this. <laughs> so, um, I'm shooting those, yeah, about 985 today. Um, I've got the Athlon Cronus BTR Gen 2 on top. Um, ask Turk about it, actually. Okay. This, he asked, we sold each other on this scope. Uh, the fact that we were at Prairie Dog Palooza, Palooza. Gen 1, mm -hmm. Episode 1. Uh, we ran this thing up and down all day and it tracked perfect. So, pretty easy choice there for me. Um, I've got the, well, this is the old one. It's now MDT, um, electronic bubble level combo, um, which is a must for this competition. Um, I like it a lot more than the analog bubble, um, especially because I don't have to sit there and constantly shift back and forth and look at it. Uh, I can just see the red, blue, or green lights in my peripheral, and when I'm green, I'm good. Can I ask you a question about that? Yeah. You, you had mentioned that for this competition specifically, yeah. it's really important. Yeah. Why, why would you say that is? Well, I would say for actually really the bench rest, everything like that, if you get any cant at all, that's going to throw your shot left or right. Okay. And with the wind today, I don't even want to try and tempt that. <laughs> it is tricky today. And so with this PSC and all this dynamic moving around, it's super important to be yeah yeah be flat be level be steady um especially how sensitive that level is uh you're catching any drift so that's just when i know that i'm centered um it's taking some practice but that's what we do awesome okay sorry go ahead no worries um uh, let's see anything else to add on i got the air marksman weights um those are pretty important with this bottle being back here um you just want to create a good equal balance gun um, especially like shooting off any obstacle it's super important it's it's just makes life easier um, I got the MDT sky pod so I guess two MDT accessories on here um, and then to finish it off I have the impulse air moderator that's the 1350 and then I have the non tapered um, adapter or baffle section um, can I just ask? to match the oh sorry go ahead. oh I was just gonna say it just matches the profile of the shroud can you take can you kind of take us through the importance of the impulse air moderator absolutely yeah you want so, some science? yeah 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 for sure I'll take it apart for you um, first off it does super stellar as it comes with uh, four baffles um, but you can buy additional baffles and just add those in Oh, I've been doing some shooting today. Yeah, yeah look at all that. It's getting let it up. <laughs> um, but overall, I'm super happy with it. Um, I love Tom, the owner. Um, but overall, that size being that quiet, I love it. It's an easy choice for me. Um, what about? Of course, he's got all oh, styles. Yeah. 
He's got. It's, it's attractive. It's important. To he's got so many colors. I can't keep track. Blue, green, orange. You name it. Ryan, are you okay to um, talk about your tune a little bit? Yeah, for and sure. How you have the regs set up and. Yeah, okay. definitely, definitely. Let's uh, switch yeah. again. Yeah, let's switch again. So, um, I started with my reg being at 130 at home. Um, I was able to get really good speeds with it without being over regged or anything like that. I didn't run the reg up. It allowed me to get a few extra shots, um, especially out of this small bottle here. Um, then I had my hammer. I came up, uh, I was on about three and a quarter mm -hmm. on that macro adjust or micro adjust. Um, overall, it was really happy. Um, I didn't get a lot. I didn't get a lot of time to spend here with it to retune it. Mm -hmm. um, but when I had it there, three and a half on the hammer, uh, about 130, I was getting those Zans at a thousand, um, and it was super consistent. It was super happy. Um, they kind of have that happy sound. Yeah. When they're tuned perfect. Uh huh. Um, so I spent a lot of time on it. Um, thankfully, my work allows me to do that. Yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, and then I also had those uh, 34 grain javelins. I just bumped up 135 on the reg, if I remember correctly, and then about three and a half on the hammer. I didn't overhammer it. I'm not trying to overhammer anything. Um, I personally just don't like doing that. Um, I know. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I was showing it off. Um, but. Anyways, <laughs> that's not distracting. <laughs> what did I say? Uh, we were talking about three the regulator and a half, at the three time. And a half. Yeah, I got those. Yeah, so I stuck both slugs around a thousand, um, and at thirty-five yards in an indoor range, which I really like shooting indoors for tuning because I get zero factors. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, they were one hole, like a really well pellet tuned hole. Well, let me ask, Ryan, coming from Utah, I would imagine you, you've got a lot more elevation. Probably some warmer, drier air. Yeah. And now you're here in New Hampshire, and I, and I think you mentioned that reg was you started out with one was it 130 back home? Yeah, 130 back home. And then what did you need to did you did the 130? You had to reset it to 130 for here. Or did you uh, change no, it? the the reg stayed the same, but yeah, I did have to. I mean, in travel, I should mm -hmm. say. Yeah. So I tuned it. Um, we're at about 4,700 feet at home, and then six. 15% humidity mm -hmm. <laughs> and I come here so it's like 60% humidity and we're like a hundred feet above sea level I was actually pretty surprised I only lost 30 feet per second so I brought that up to about 135 somewhere halfway between 130 140 so I'm guessing 135 I don't have the digital gauge so I don't have an exact one um, and then I brought my hammer up quite a bit um, to the point it was getting pretty hard to turn so I knew I was pushing it um, that got me to 985 to about 979 consistently. So about a four foot spread. Um, good deal. Pretty last, good. Last, yeah, I'll last, take that. Last question, Ryan. Yeah. You've been awesome. Thank you. On the Pantera, if they don't know it, where is the air stored on board on this gun? Oh, good question. <laughs> just a little something yeah, different. Yeah, a little something different. So I'll just take this shroud off a little bit. Um, you can see me twisting this shroud off, yep. which is attached to the plenum. So your plenum is here. That's where, you know, your plenum air is stored. It's huge. Those are the lungs. Yeah, those are the lungs. Absolutely. As well as, you know, you have your bottle here. So um, the bottle feeds the plenum. Yeah. The plenum gets behind the pellet and sneezes, basically. Yeah. That's yeah. about how it works. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, uh, yeah, so, I mean, huge plenum. Honestly, I mean, longer than the bottle. Mm -hmm. but it's so your air source is here and here, not just here. Yeah, exactly. Got it. That's yeah. what, in case anyone was looking at this going, that looks a little different. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, um, Nat, yeah. here we are. Here we are. Thoughts? This has been awesome. <laughs> this has been so cool. It really? Is. Yeah, you know, it has been awesome. Thank you. Um, I didn't know what to expect. Thank I've you. never been this far northeast. Where I've been in New York, but that's about it. Uh, I mean, super pretty area, um, super cool range, and uh, just all the obstacles they got laid out, um, the layout. I mean, we've been cruising through events. Yeah, it's so, so smooth, so well, well run. Yeah, absolutely. Shout out to you know John and Chris. Um, no, this has been awesome. Like, I would love to come back this 
this needs to happen. Well, we'll hope Absolutely. to see you next year. Ryan, Yeah. thank you, man. Oh, of course. Appreciate thank you. you. Appreciate Get warm. You. I don't know how uh, you're doing. I know. You're I'm about to, yeah. Okay, go. Get yeah. your jacket. Because <laughs> yeah. it's Get, cold. It is cold. We're dropping. We got rain coming tomorrow. Yeah, I'm not, not used to this humidity cold. I'm freezing. <laughs> it gets right into your bone, doesn't yeah, bones, exactly. doesn't it? Exactly. Thanks, brother. Sweet. Thanks, Scott. There we go. To walk out on the line, please stand by. How you like that, baby? Three, two, one, go. Impact! The other thing, Michael, that's not where your value lies, if you don't mind me saying. It's it's not your members, it's your it's it's the IP addresses that swing through there. Yeah, absolutely. Like, the number of views, what if that makes sense to a caveman? What's, what's that number? So on average Oh you're talking it, about independent views? Independent, yeah, users. Okay. Okay. Annually we are about twenty million page views. And how many independent users? Though? Uh, I that's saw. It? That's it. <laughs> I saw. I saw your. Bush League, man. I, I on Google Analytics, I saw his independent. Fate. We were like six, seven, eight hundred thousand or something. Uh, it's closer to a, a million. A million cookie Use, users. Cookie users. users. That's what I was after. The support that he's on. The support he's on. No. No. Oh shit, I see that. If you're a shooter, you definitely need to be over here. If you're not a sportsman shooter, do you still need a safety brief, which is everyone that's here? Get over here. Yeah. I held up two mil and left about eight. <laughs> really? Yeah, I was up two mil and maybe like two tenths to the left when I impacted the Firebird. I was so. off, like, but she got right all excited off the side. She said she, was, she, she, she wasn't as excited as everybody else was. She was like, "What?" It just didn't really. Because we saw, we all saw the flash. Know? She was behind the scopes. Though. Yeah, mm. I can see the smoke, but I just wasn't sure if I was supposed to be done shooting or if I was supposed to keep going. Oh, okay. Hey, Matt Dubber, guys. Yep. YouTube's Air, Ar Air Arms Hunting South Africa and Team Element and Javelin Slugs. Yep. Just came off PSC <laughs> Precision Shooter Challenge, I guess. Competition I don't Challenge. Know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Pick one. And I've asked Matt for, uh, for him to teach you guys his Pantera. Kind yep. of a new gun out there. See a lot of people running it. Yeah, so th the reason a lot of people are running this for this discipline um, is that it was built for this discipline. Okay. Literally, like, it, it was built to compete doing this. Um, a few things that make it suitable for this. Um, number one, it's it's a low profile gun. So fitting in small barricades and stuff, you'll see there's some small holes out there that, mm -hmm. that you just wouldn't be able to fit through through most impacts with a big bottle underneath or even a cylinder underneath. So mm -hmm. this is quite a unique um, setup up in, in that sense. Scope mounted close to the ball so that you're not as sensitive with um, cant error. Sure. Um, and then just the ability to I mean, to put weight on the flooring to balance it out so you can plonk it on a bag. So you can see mount balances right there. Um, you'll see a lot of guys have put weights on their, on their rails. Um, this rail happens to be a Sabre Tactical rail, but the fa factory one does pretty much the same. I'm just testing this one out, but okay. yeah, they all give you the ability to add rails. Have a full length arc at the bottom, which means you can, you can uh, shift your bipod anywhere you want on the, on the rail at the bottom. And then, yeah, you can swap out your grips. I've got a, a Air Marksman carbon grip on here, which is just something I'm, I'm trying out, but it's got a thumb up position. I'm trying to teach myself to, to use that thumb up position instead of like yeah, yeah, holding it like, mm -hmm. like, like I would when I'm hunting or something. Sure. Um, and then I've got an Air Marksman 300 bar bottle, just because the way I've set this up with 40 grand javelins at 
990 to 1000 feet per second it's chewing air I, I only get basically 12 shots per full on the dot say that again you're, you're <laughs> pushing a, a, a what grain javelin a 40 grain to 22 kil javelin there we go at about a thousand feet per second okay so so my the idea is you want the best ballistic coefficient possible and you want some decent speed because as you can see everyone will tell you the wind was oh crazy. it was horrible it was, today like you you don't really know where it's going so the yeah. higher your ballistic coefficient the less movement you will have and so it means that people like me who are uh, who are possibly less experienced than some of the guys who get to like like know exactly what their wind calls are all the time mm -hmm. uh, I can rely more on like the physics of it to help me out sure then my brain sure right. which helps a lot can I ask a bottle sure. question so you said this was a 300 bar the yes. one that comes on there is it a 250 bar the one that comes on is 250 and um, if I fall to 250 I get 12 shots until until I, I hit 160 on the reg which is where I've set my reg okay and that's enough to get through a stage but it is nice to just give it a bit of extra if you if you can so, so the valving can handle 300 bar no problem 100 percent what I'm hearing it can okay percent yeah. yeah sorry continue yeah, yeah so um, in fact the your bottle gauge goes to 300 bar for the reason that they knew people would put these on got it yeah all right is that it uh, there's more there's okay more. there's more let it rip okay. brother uh firstly I'll, I'll just say I've, I've decided to not put a silence on the end uh -huh. because I it's a bit louder but I wanted to keep it a bit short you know it's quite a long gun already sure uh, I've put some MDT weights on the front to just help balance it out uh, MDT scar pod which is this is my first time I'm using it and what's cool about it is so you can see uh, for, for shooting prone you can get it really wide and low um, but then so it's got all these different positions like this so you can get it nice and tall you can extend it out and then you can you can also put it at an angle forward but I personally I personally don't like putting um, a bar pod tilted forward at an angle uh, for disciplines like this mm -hmm. because you can it, it can bounce a bit more and that can affect your point of impact so yeah this this bar pod was made for PRS and a lot of guys uh, run this and then lastly of course the uh, the beast on top the, the Theos, Theos which is essentially a spotting scope this morning at, <laughs> at bench like I was, I was, uh, I was asking guys to check because I, I hit the one of the targets like in the middle and I couldn't see whether I hit it or not. But and then guys were lending me spotting scopes to check like whether I hit it or not. And this thing gave me a better image than all the spotting scopes at 36 That's times, amazing. which is awesome. That's cool. So yeah, awesome scope. And once again, this was developed for this discipline. So um, you know, focuses down close for the NRL 22 stuff from fine air gun, um, big old parallax. So you get that fine adjustment, and then. Yeah, chunky turrets, 12 mils per turn with a, a, a zero stop. So yeah, it's an awesome setup, and I'm very happy with it. I didn't shoot my absolute best today, but I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty happy. You, you my look first like time smiles. shooting a Panthera um, in competition, and I I will say I will definitely be sticking with a Panthera for this stuff. It I've never had to say this about any other gun before for anything else, but it beats my impact for this, mm. which is you know that's saying something. So all right, la last yeah. last last question. What would be your best piece of advice for anybody thinking about coming here and shooting PSC? C. No, PC. PSC. I think it's PSC. PSC. Yeah. yeah. So I'll, I'm going to use Nikolai as an example because everyone knows Nikolai is a bench shooter. Like he loves shooting bench. He hasn't done this before, and he was a little bit apprehensive about it. He's been glowing this whole <laughs> afternoon. He's like, oh. This is the most fun I've ever had. Like, I'm definitely going to shoot this for you. <laughs> so my, my advice would be just come and just shoot. And like, you don't even have to count your score. Just come and have fun. Honestly, um, yeah, it's 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 my it's my favorite discipline personally. And uh, yeah, it's, it's one of those things, you know, you get, to, you get to talk to your friends in between. You get to watch them shoot. Um, it's just a really fun event. And um, yeah, I, 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 uh, I think that anyone who hasn't experienced it should. Awesome. Matt, yeah. schooling and advice from a pro. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank you. I think you should probably go I'm so cold, find a but jacket. I, I have got my shoes on today. That's <laughs> maybe why I didn't shoot so well today, but... <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. That, I know you, you just, you're toast with your shoes yeah. on. <laughs>
Thank you. Shooter ready. <laughs> you may begin. Three minutes. It go! Just a new service for moving the air guns. Dry benches. <laughs> And that's the idea, you know, if you build it, they will come, right? Yep. So I promise you, anybody that comes this year, there's no two ways around it. They're here next year because this only gets better from here. Yeah, it was, I think it was smart not to try to oversell themselves, yep. you know, overbuild it because, man, it's so important that the very first event goes smoothly. Absolutely. And that's one thing, man, the guys at Northeast, they've, they've done everything very smart that is why i was so like desperate to get slugs to shoot well because i was just dying it's the only one that i know of that has two power planters earnest road design it has a uh, titanium uh hammer turned by earnest road it's extra extra heavy and it works this gun would shoot a 40 grain slug at 1060 all day, every day, with a one inch MOA at 100 yards. Provided you do your job. The equipment is possible to do it, but the shooter got to know what he's doing. For oh, sure. Yeah. I got a black hound scope on it, uh, segment gauges, laser. Uh, Saber tactical, but and uh, stock or whatever you call it, pistol grip. I got the uh, UTG overboard bipod that I love these things. You know, I, I'll never go back to a, a underside bipod. This is this is the way to go. And adjustable uh, cheek rest. And Spa did some work on it too, because I got this thingy here. And Saber Tactical, Arkansas Red. But here's, here's the thing there is no flex in this barrel at all. Look at this none. Rock solid. Rock solid. It don't move. Look, the bottle is moving. The yes. barrel ain't moving. Yeah, that's good stuff, man. Yeah. So when you power this gun, shoot power shots out of this gun. You don't have to worry about that S thing that the mm -hmm. that the, the squiggle. Up. Yeah, you gotta worry about the squiggle. Mm -hmm. It's gonna go where you aim it. Before. Yeah, Donnie doesn't buy it. He just comes out and does it. 211s for sure. Yeah, that's a really nice car. Thank you. Good job, bud. Yeah, he said he, he called the 1 5. Something. It came in from the side. I saw the pellet the whole way. Okay hey guys, this is Nikolai Baldov all the way from Moscow, Russia. He is a champion shooter there. He has been a champion shooter here as well. So I've asked him to teach you his setup and his rig, but before that, we're here at NAC for the very first time. Yeah. What are your thoughts, sir? You know guys, I think that as this event is a big event and it is uh, organized for the very first time, it's just awesome. I really like it. I really like the shooting range. Uh, I really like people come here, so a lot of new people, so I could get introduced with all of them acquainted 
and I really like the atmosphere, so it's cool. And uh, speaking of atmosphere, this weather is probably just like home for you, so you're right at home. I would say that uh, it's much warmer now at home in Moscow, yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is cold for this uh, this Florida tree frog. So, um, Nikolai, what are you shooting here, sir? So, that's my FX crown that I shoot for, I think, two years already. Uh, it's a bit tuned, as you can see, any gun starts with a barrel. So, uh, it's uh, FX STX with a 500 millimeter twist rate, so it's a bit, a bit custom, I would say. Uh, liner is put in uh, the carbon fiber sleeve, glued in. Then we have a uh, barrel tube that is glued in, in this 25 millimeter carbon fiber tube. So, it is rock solid, <laughs> as you can see, and it can make me absolutely sure that nothing will happen with the barrel. Then uh, let's go to Sabre Tactical Chassis. This one is perfect for me because I can adjust everything I need. I can put Raspberry's bipeds here. Those are F-Class bipeds that make shooting absolutely steady. I can regulate tilt, I can regulate the height, so no any problems. Uh, this adjustable buttstock is also very useful because you, I can use it shooting from the bench or I can use it shooting for example American field target I can get it up down or uh, speed solid shooting where we are not allowed to use uh, bag bag yeah right yeah bag. Bag. good so I just make it like that and it gets my shoulder very good uh, cheek regulated very well then I've upgraded the lower part as you can see it is in one line with the barrel that allows me to put it on the back and have very straight recoil of course here's very low recoil but anyway it's important for me this modification is better i've made uh, custom build uh, first we made a 3d model of that grip and it absolutely fits my hand so it makes me absolutely comfortable shooting the trigger is polished it's tuned for very, very light pressure. It works perfect. I don't have to think about it. And it also makes my shooting much easier. Well, uh, nowadays scope is used here is Kalis. Very good scope, very good quality. I'm very satisfied with it. And uh, some of you may know that I make videos on my Raspberry channel. And my main style is uh, scope cam footage. So I make scope cam footage in 4K 120 FPS that allows you to see extremely clear picture and in the case I need I can make very high quality slow motion. I use camera that show you the flags, a camera that show me from the side. So it's a kind of tutorial videos. Everyone who are interested they can just watch it and understand how we should be dressed. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Nikolai, if they want to find you on yeah. YouTube, where do they go? Where's your YouTube channel? Just Russ Bear. That's all. R U S B E A R. Right. Russ Bear. Russ Bear. Got yeah. it. Can I ask you about um, caliber? What 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 you're shoot? What pellet you're shooting? Yeah. And maybe talk about speed and tune a little. Yes, of course. Okay. So uh, I shoot 22 caliber pellets because, as far as you know, all bench rest as for now are shot with pellets, and uh, I use GSB Monster designs, but that's a separate story because. Old ones were just perfect and I have some, I think 20, 25 tins left and I use them only at the most important competitions like that one, Rocky Mountain Gun Challenge, Extreme Bench Rest and I'll use them on Pyramid Air Cup this year also. But the situation is that I can't use them during my shooting practice. And since 2019 those pellets, uh, their quality and their accuracy became much lower. And to tell you the truth, it demotivates me a lot because I can't use good pellets to practice. And my usual results with those new GSB Monster designs is 20, oh, 20, 205, 210, so it's rather low. But every time I take old ones, I go to the shooting range, to competitions, it shows very good results. So I wish that GSB company could hear me and get those old GSB Monster redesigns. I assure you, all sportsmen shootings who should be interested, it's just their dream to get those pellets back. Please do it, guys. If we speak about uh, regulator, so it is uh, usually 145 bar. If we speak about spring, summertime, uh, pin probe is used here. 
there's no any uh, additional weight, so pin probe is a part of uh, slug power kit. I don't use any extra weights here, just no need, because I shoot at uh, 970 feet per second and it's quite enough to, to get good result. In winter time it's rather challenging, because uh, FX Crown has very small plenum, it's about 15 cubic centimeters, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that makes sense. Yes, and um, it's hard to reach that speed in winter, so I have to use either tung tungsten hammer, and either shorten the valve spring that allow me to get there, but tungsten hammer gives me too much vibration, so I don't like it. So winter practice is a bit challenging, but all other times, late spring, summer, early autumn is just awesome, at least for, for Moscow time and climate. Can I ask a, a winter question? Yes. So at what temperature have you been able to get the crown to perform? At what low temperature? <laughs> oh. Look, the lowest temperature I ever tried to shoot with it is uh, minus 40 Fahrenheit. Did it work? It worked. It worked fine. Uh, I couldn't reach the speed I need, but there were no any leaks and it worked as it should, should be worked. Well, that's what I meant. Like, it, it, what, what temperature can these guys run this gun and get to the velocity they need to? Um, I would say that it is above zero, so when, okay. the, w w when there is no uh, ice, you can use it easily without any problems. Okay. To get that velocity. If you use, uh, for example, 18 grain GSBs, it's not a problem. Use it uh, the whole year in any temperature because it's quite enough. And uh, last question. I just pulled you off the 100, your first relay. How'd you do? Well, you know, I'm satisfied because I used those very old GSB Monster designs. <laughs> your go-tos. Yeah, I, I had just one flyer to eight, and uh, I know that it's a flyer. I had uh, one or two mistakes wind reading. It's also eights. So I estimate that it's, it'll be about 230, something like that, plus minus. So not, not bad. Strong. Very yeah. good. Nikolai, thank you. Unless we left anything out, I will wish you well. Thank you. And thank thanks, you so for, much. thanks for teaching them so much. So you're welcome, guys. <laughs> Shoot sports, compete, and train bench rest. We're waiting for you. Make sure if you preloaded your magazines, you take the lids off. If you have any other pellet cave tins, take the lids off of those for inspection. Once again, Sportsman Class Finals. You may now proceed to the line and take out your pneumatic rifles, place them on the bench with the muzzle pointed down the range. How's my time? 40 seconds. This is uh, this was the whole top lid was not locked down. And I picked the whole, all three of them up. Didn't let her. I, she was actually going to carry them, I and I didn't let her carry them because they're heavy as hell. So I come back to get them, and this is what. But I, I did carry I them over here, so the reality oh is I couldn't. Were they sorted? And yes. Oh yeah, these are all sorted. Oh, they're, yeah. they're different grain weights. They're different oh, shapes, sizes, everything. So sorry. That's all right. Man, I love these guys. Yeah. You know what? Coming up here, being able to spend time with them. Yeah, working their hindies off. Oh, sorry. Oh, you're good, man. You didn't need that hand, did you? Not really. I've used it enough. <laughs> Got another one. But uh, no, nah, man. They've the amount of work they put into it is it's just incredible. And you know, it, it makes me really appreciate how much work goes into these things. When you look at an Armac oh, or you look yeah. at a Pyramid Cup, and, and just being a part of this and. It's just an incredible amount of work, and it doesn't get easier from one year to the next. If anything, I believe it probably gets harder from one year to the next because sure. you got to outdo last year. That's right. You got to grow and be better, and that gives you some perspective, doesn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. You know, and I think anybody who's ever been able to come out and enjoy one of these, you know, kind of watch these kind of behind the seal, but behind the scenes reels, and it give you a, a brand new perspective of how much work goes into it. Yeah. Both.
Ken was saying the head, the, the head one was very predictable. The moment you feel feel a change, you feel like something in the neck. He said that's when it went completely crazy. Just so now in each arm? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you guys are tough. Really. Have you shot already this morning? No, I'm next. Pardon the giggling guys, we just came off of the second 100 yard relay day two and it's a 30 minute relay, you have 30 minutes to shoot. Your two cards, and I do a double take and Chris is standing there behind his gun like three minutes into the relay, like totally done. Guys, if you don't know, this is Chris Turk of YouTube channel Up North Air Gunner and I've asked him uh, to teach you his rig. Yeah. So uh, Chris, uh, if you will, please, that was hilarious. Yeah, awesome. And then we'll talk about what happened out Yeah, here, we'll talk about what happened. Mind. But yeah, let's cover the rig real quick. Yeah. So I guess uh, front to back, we've got a uh, Donny FL, as always, on the front. Not just for suppression, but I also find that, you know, helping tuning, you really want everything that's on the front of your gun to be, you know, that you know what the weight is, right? So I've got the uh, FX tuner on this one. We can slide that weight back and forth, just kind of zero that in a little bit on the uh, tune. This right here for me, uh, the last co competitions has been kind of the game changing piece of uh, equipment. And that's the TRS rail from Sabre Tactical. And then also having this GRS over the top bipod like this, what it does is it brings the gun down like lower to the bench. Whereas if you've got Picatinny, you're kind of up, up higher. Mm -hmm. And for me, I'm, I'm not very tall, nor are you. <laughs> Never was. A, a short guys, yeah. you know, right? Have, you know, being kind of down lower to the bench and you're sitting on that seat, just having that um, that bipod just bring it down just huh. so much better. I never thought of that. Yeah, it's great. Mm -hmm. um, so we have got the, the Element Optics Titan. Um, for me, um, having that clear glass, being able to see those 30 caliber holes in the paper, I have double punched my card in previous years because I was using a lesser scope. But ever since I went to this, I can see every hole on my paper. And so I've saved points just by not making stupid mistakes. <laughs> That's a takeaway. That's a learning moment right there. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, Sabre Tactical uh, Bag Rider. I don't use a um, one-piece rest. I love having a bag in the rear to be able to kind of squeeze it, hmm. get my elevation right. Mm -hmm. Ergo Grip. For me, I love this thing. Um, just it, just the big palm swell in it. I just like how it feels in my hand. And here on the end, we got the Sabre Tactical, um, the, the butt stock here. And the way I actually use it during bench is I can clip it back here like this, so it kind of mm -hmm. kind of holds my shoulder. So yeah, there's there's a rig. Cool. Can I ask a couple questions? Sure, absolutely. So I think you, I heard you say 30 cal. Yep. And so, do you want to speak to projectile and speed, oh, and maybe even yeah. touch on your tune too? Yeah. Okay. So uh, I have a bad habit of like just trying new stuff during competition. I don't prepare at all, really. And so when the Zan uh, pellets came out uh, about a month ago, I hadn't had a chance to shoot them, but I finally got a, a, a set of the new BR100s. And I did a side-by-side -side test with against the 44 grain JSBs, and I'm seeing like a three inch difference of less wind drift. Three inches, like in the same way. They're that, they're that they're different that of a color, different. huh? They're that different. Hmm. So there's some things in this tune that I, I won't tell you guys about because I don't want to give away all my secrets. Sure. But when you get them tuned right, they buck the wind like no other pellet that I've ever I've ever used. I can steer that pellet everywhere I want it to go. Let me ask you this. In the hierarchy of tuning importance, yep. would you say speed, tune, or harmonics is probably the most important ingredient there? So I read an article by um, Brian Litz a while ago that talked about um, this shot dispersion. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times when you're when you're tuning, when there's no wind and you're just stacking them right on top of each other, but if that same pellet at that tune gets thrown off by that wind, uh -huh. I will statistically like to take a, a projectile that can buck the wind better because you could have like a one and a half inch, 100 yard group, but it bucks the wind by three inches mm -hmm. versus a stacking of pellet. But if that pellet gets pushed off by six inches, mm -hmm. statistically, you're going to be able to keep your shots in that eight ring. So none of the three that I mentioned. None of the three. More so. That's the for me. Load and barrel. With now because of these pellets, 
it's like now if I can find the perfect tune, I find the harmonic tune, but just using these pellets by themselves, you have a statistical advantage because of shot dispersion over everybody else. Very interesting. And I think we forgot to say, guys, this is an FX Impact M3 yeah. sniper configuration, probably. It is. When it was born. And it's a 700 millimeter barrel, which I liked because I don't have to run the reg so high. But what I love about the M3 is that micro adjuster. Mm -hmm. When we were up on the line tuning the day before, because I was, didn't come prepared at all, <laughs> just using that micro that micro adjuster just to kind of get that valve just nice and happy. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was the that's the secret sauce. And anyway, can I can I ask with that Zan? It's, it's a pellet. Yeah, pellet. Yeah. Um, are you running the one in sixteen or one in twenty four? I'm not gonna. Well, okay, no, <laughs> hey, buddy. No, no, I will tell you. No, I, it, okay, I will tell you because this. Liners, the liner that was just handed randomly handed to me at RMAC last year, and they do a lot of testing FX of different um, twist rates. I believe that this is the one in 38 slash one in 40 twist. Okay. So it's super slow because twist. it's a 30 cal. I'm thinking 22. Yeah, when yeah. I said so it's a super slow, super Forgive slow me. twist. And what's interesting is the is that having that slow twist rate and the speed at which I'm shooting these, it's just those pellets were so stable. And what's the speed? Okay, never mind. <laughs> Boop! <Yeah. laughs> we won't put that in there. All right, let's change subjects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you just came off the 100. Yep. Day two, you want to take us through it? Yeah, so uh, it was, um, the wind was really, it was dead when we first came out here. There was no wind at, at all. And I learned a really good lesson from Frederick uh, when he ran that card. I, I just basically used that same technique. It's once you find that good wind, just go. And today was that day that if you did not go at the beginning, that wind got bad, really bad towards the end. Did you get a chance to see what your what your total score was about? Yeah, I mean, it's, it wasn't a great, I mean, it's a great card for me for that win. I mean, it's probably around 200. Okay. Yesterday. I think it was around 213, 214, something like that. And they combine the two days to yep. see if you get to go on to the finals, right? Yeah. If I'm not mistaken. So hopefully, hopefully I'm in, I'm in the finals. We'll see. Awesome. But Knack, here yeah, we are. Here we are. What are your thoughts? Oh, man, they nailed it. For this to be a first time event like this, I mean, these guys, I met the um, the guys over there at Northeast Air Guns at RMAC at the, uh, the FX picnic thing that we did. And they were telling us, like, hey, we want to do this, this you know, East Coast event. I like, oh, well, you know, good luck. That's going to take a lot of work. Yes, it is. They, they put this all together in less, less than a year. It's Planning. amazingly oh. smooth and smooth. well run. We got the vendors out here. The line has been safe and efficient. I mean, so huge cue. On kudos. time. On time. Safety briefings, punctuality. Make sure you get, get there for your safety briefings and mm -hmm. um, the squash bomb yesterday. That was a lot of fun. Oh my gosh. I hope you, hope you show them that video. I will. Yeah. Uh, that'll be in there. Yeah. For so, sure. Yeah, no, it's been super fun. Well, Chris, thanks for taking us to a, a, a school CT. Yeah, yeah. And uh, good luck here this thanks, weekend. Steve. I'll be rooting you Thanks. Thanks, everybody. Make sure you get all your guns equipment out. We're going to go ahead and be able to close things down to make sure we can get uh, downrange and put some targets up. Please take your guns and point the muzzles downrange at this time. Let's get them set up so we can go uh, cold here. We make sure we can get everyone downrange and put new targets up there for you to get confirm your zeros. Again, ladies and gentlemen, the tower is the red tent. The tower is a red tent. Please exit and enter to the right left of the tower. You'll take all commands from the tower. Thirty cal FX Impact MK two slash three. 
It's got the power block. It's got the 720 uh, plenum. The Sabre Tactical uh, pistol grip. It's got the pump, Sabre Tactical. It's got the Sabre gauges with a arcing scope. For my money and what I do, for my money and what I do, that's the best scope on the market. It's not something that you would go shoot precision with, but if you're a hunter or a casual shooter, this is the way to go for my money. Ceasefire, ceasefire, ceasefire. If you need to do a perch shot, do one perch shot at this time. Do a perch shot at this time. Okay, mm -hmm. Hey, look who it is. <laughs> Everybody wave. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. Edge up a little. <laughs> and they just love. Guys, this is Mike Haverly from New York, and Mike also just came off the hundred, and this is his Scout Epoch. Epoch. Epoch, yep. and I've asked him to <laughs> to teach you his guns. Yep. So, Mike, the floor is yours, bud. Yep. I um, recently purchased this. Um, I'm a Smart Parts fan, an old Smart Parts fan. So I understand their technology. It, it's very simple for me because um, I used to work on their guns. But um, I've always liked newer technology stuff and this and has fit right into what I'm doing. And um, I've upgraded a couple things on it. Um, we came up with, or actually um, Steve Toby and I come up with a double tank uh, system for it. Um, it works very well and uh, gives me more bench time and um, I enjoy this gun a lot. I'm still learning it, and I had a great time here on my first round, and uh, weather's perfect, and uh, the gun shot great, and um, I'm, I'm using the Zan uh, pellets, and they're working very well. Can, uh, I, can I ask you, Mike, what speed are you running the pellets, and then can you teach us a little bit about your tune? Yeah, um, actually, I'm, I'm in the high 900s. Um, the Zan pellets are perfect weight-wise. Um, I do push them through a die um, for the skirts, you know, to make sure everything stays round. But um, they seem to uh, shoot very straight. Uh, we didn't have to deal with any wind today yet, so uh, I was lucky there. But yeah, and uh, I also picked up um, the longer barrel, the 35-inch barrel. Uh, they come stocked with the 25, and for this event or for a hundred yard. Um, it really helps uh, reach out more. It, it, it stabilizes a lot more for for distance. But yeah, cool. I've, I've um, in, you know, having a good scope, I have the Night Force on it. I was and, just gonna ask you about yeah, that. Yeah, and that is, deal. Me, and, me and seeing things at my age, I really would like to see it clear. So I always I recommend, I recommend if anybody shoots, they make fun of me for using a really high-end scope, but really, if you want to hit something, you want to see it. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Mike, thanks for uh, oh, taking us through well, your rig. And, and thank you. Good luck, uh, good luck the rest yep. of the week out here. Thank you, Steve. If you want a time check, let me know beforehand. Uh, if you want a purge shot, we can send a purge shot before you go to. Okay. We can't use the same rung twice. Yes, you yeah, can. Yeah. can. Yep. Yes. Oh. So you can just switch back. Yep. And forth. As long as long as you're moving between each target. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? No. Nope. All right. So Nikolai, you're up first. So at, at the start, you're going to start with uh, bag in hand, gun, magazine in, okay. bolt open. You're then going to move to the rooftop at the start. You're going to engage the 25-yard target with two shots. You're then going to move to the 170 yard target. That's on the berm, correct? That's up on the berm with two shots. You're then going to move to offhand, unsupported, on the 52 yard target, two shots. You're going to then move to kneeling position. You're going to engage the 99 yard target with two shots. Now that's the one on the left of the row, correct? The left it's, far Yeah, one. it's the one that's closest to the Zan sign okay. on the right. Okay. So, um, Engage that with two shots. You're going to move back to the rooftop. You're going to engage the 170 again with two shots. Okay. And you're going to engage the 127 with two shots.
so the best way to describe the FX Legion is they are a team of tactical brand ambassadors. People that absolutely love the brand want to be involved, but they can't necessarily hop on a jet and fly to New Hampshire and be at NAC, but they still love the brand and want to be involved. So they'll get a series of different missions over time. Each time they complete a mission, they will be compensated. There is a store that they can go into and redeem their compensation and quite literally any FX products available they can use it as a gift card to apply at any store that sells FX goods and pretty much they'll get missions for instance maybe the mission is to watch this video like subscribe and comment but the idea is is to give them an opportunity to kind of help out with everything and allow them to be compensated for doing what they're most likely already doing anyway it's a way of giving back folks we have here with us gabe valenzuela from california all the way from california you could not be further from home here in new hampshire that's correct 2966 miles that is amazing just about how far he was shooting with this FX Impact M3. Yep. And we just got off the Squatch Bomb. Yep. And I can't, I couldn't believe how you were dinging that 200, 250, and 300. Yep. And this is not one of those big, long Panteras. No, it's a, it's a 700 millimeter oh uh, gun, but uh, I don't have anything on the end of it. So it just appears shorter than, uh, you know, what you normally see. Take us through it. Teach us your rig, please. Yeah, from the top, uh, it's a Vortex Razor HD Scope 6x24. It's an AMG model. It's a little bit lighter. Um, it's got a Saber Tactical 20 MOA rail on top with a bubble level. And I got some MDT weights on it to uh, better balance the gun. And I also have some MDT, uh, what they call Baker wings. And you can see how wide a platform it gives you for like PRS style shooting. So it's very stable and balanced on uh, different obstacles. And I've always had the Atlas bipod. That was like my original bipod and I've had very good success. I've been on the podiums uh, many times, so I just don't change it. I'm sure there are bigger bipods that have uh, give you probably better stability, but this has always been good enough to it's like hey if i'm doing that well with this like don't change anything you can't argue um, with your success i mean there were guys out there with bipods that yes know, look like they're a, huge look, look like a glider they're and then huge. here you come along with your little baby impact like ding, it ding. works Someone's it like, what works the and so it's like if, once you find something that works you just don't change it because you could change like harmonics uh the position forward or back on your bipod and how the gun uh, reacts to its uh, shot process and once you find a sweet spot uh, I always try to leave everything where it's at because the gun's happy that way and so those are things that people switch and then they don't understand it's like why does my gun not shoot as accurately as it did before so uh, there's a learning nugget for you guys can you speak uh, Gabe to uh, uh, projectile, speed, yes. weight, all these kinds of things? Yes, the projectile I'm using is a 40 grain uh, 22 caliber Altaros. I use those because those have the highest BC that you can get and it's accurate at 100 because I'll shoot uh, probably like an average of 2 inch group at 200 and that's in the wind and a lot of times when it calms down it's even uh, tighter than that so that that is just like really good accuracy for slugs and it has the highest rated BC, which is uh, BC of 0.21, which is kind of unheard of for slugs in a 22 caliber. And I'm really happy with it. And that's why I've, I've ordered cases and cases of that stuff. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, Gabe, but is the Alturos, is that a CNC right, so it, machine awesome. Yes, slug? it is. Uh, All right, each was slug is uh, made on a cnc machine so you get consistency and its diameter and its weight and it just uh bucks the wind so much better than any other slug that i've uh shot with so i'm kind of reluctant to disclose that but 
we're here and it's like well, people want to shoot that i think i think fine. that's going to surprise a lot of people and and did you mention the speed if you did i'm sorry how, how fast are you pushing that alturas when i started shooting through it i just started like clicking it and just like going through uh like 800 through 950 and when i got to 860 i was surprised how much the group had closed up and i'm like well I wanted to shoot it higher, but isn't that interesting? 860, that's where it's at for this because it's happy, it's shooting accurately, and I haven't changed it, and it continues to perform. Unbelievable. The, the lessons you're giving us. I think we all jump right to probably 950 to 1050 when we put a slug in our gun, but I was probably on my way there, but I was happy that I only had to shoot it up to 860, so my shot count's going to be higher. The gun is going to have. Uh, not be working as hard so the shot cycle will be a lot smoother mm -hmm. and so 860 is it for that projectile awesome. and this is a 1 in 16 twist 700 millimeter 22. So that's the heavy liner. It's the superior, superior heavy, liner. heavy yes. excuse yes. me. Yes. Say correct. It's yeah. got a little bit less choke. Yes. A little more spin. Yep and it likes it. Uh -huh. It likes it sending it at that uh, speed so that's where I'll send it. Gabe, thanks for the thanks for the teachings and dude, way to kick ass. You bet, man. Thanks <laughs> have for, have uh, a great weekend. For the interview. Thank you. Appreciate you getting in front of them. Thanks, folks. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Target Taco. Four hits. Guys, this is Warren Carter, all the way from Illinois. He just came off the 100. Yes, sir. Nice to meet you. You too. I saw you did really well out there. I wanted to ask you, I guess, first, your thoughts on that? Well, 
I, my thoughts are pretty high because I drove here from Illinois to shoot this event. So I'm, I'm jumping in with both feet. Um, been having a great time so far. The meet and greet yesterday was awesome. Um, just everybody's been super nice. This is my first big rodeo, and everybody's been super wel welcoming to me here. And uh, it's, it's been it's been a trip so far. So and we still got multiple days to go. We right? do. We're just as we begin, this smile you see here was him looking through his scope after he shot his card. So yeah. So oh, you want me to tell you about that? Okay. So I am not a bench shooter, and I just put up a card that. Can compete with the likes of Dubber and Rick Ream with this thing. Um, I'm what is this? I'm shooting a brand new uh, FX Impact M3. It's bone stock, other than, and I'll give a shout out here. Jeff Ojibwe, longtime channel subscriber, sent me this Crawford and Lipped rail for the bottom to use for this event because he always is sending me stuff to make me do better. So thank you, Jeff, for that. So that's the only other part. All the internals are stock. I'm even using the stock moderator. Got the uh, Element Titan on here, and it's just shooting money. Accutech bipod on it, and uh, yeah, I lucked out though. I had I had the first bench against the wall. A little quieter over there. Very quiet. I shot my card in three minutes. Uh huh. Uh, I noticed Billy Gardner's wind flag was hanging straight down, and I had mine a little further out, and both tails were just hanging straight down, completely still. So. All, rip. all gas, no brakes, baby. What um, what caliber are you shooting? That's a 30 cal. That's a 30 cal. Yes, sir. And um, and what score? Were you able to look at it and get an um, idea? Of what yeah, Justin up? was helping me count backwards, and he was thinking about 220 nice with, with quite a few X's in there, too, which is that's the best card I ever shot in my life, honestly. Wow, and you just, just picked it up right out of the box. Yep. Uh, no internal modifications, nothing. Did just... you even clean the barrel? Uh, I do always clean the barrel at first, but uh, I have not even adjusted the rag or anything. It just it just shoots. I, I think they come out of the box pretty suited for pallets. Yeah, for did sure. you would you have a chance to put it over the crony? Yep, yesterday what, I did. Uh, about 890, 880 in there. Right about 888 is where I wanted to target, so pretty consistent in there. Yep. And only at 100 bar. Got to love it. Mike, thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for teaching them and I uh, appreciate your time. Cheers. Good luck. Thanks.